Hello world, I welcome back to my channel. My name's Paul. Uh, today we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you around Kew. There's a lot to see here. This is a really old mining town. Look at this guys, I love this country. I really, really, everywhere you go it changes. People think Australian desert's all the same, but it's, if you actually look at it, it's different all the time. Just beautiful guys. But for now, let's roll that intro. This is the visitor centre and the police station in the same building. Just gorgeous, 1896, the old post office. Now it looks like this has been, when I first got here I thought the visitor centre part was an addition to the police station. But the reason is that this has been actually renovated, the police station hasn't, that's why it looks so much older. Just amazing guys, imagine collecting all these rocks, getting them to the right shape to build the building. And this is a bit of a panorama view of Q. And guys, as I said, this was the old post office. And they've got the old post boxes here, but if you open them up, they've got old photos and little stories what the photo's about. What a brilliant idea. And out the back, they've got a little museum. So let's go and have a look. And the ingenious of people. Mm. Someone wanted to play some music, so they built this thing out of scrap metal. Amazing. And this is where I'm staying, guys. The, it's the Q Roadhouse and Motel. Um, really, really nice room, surprisingly nice. Kind of donger accommodation, but really nice. Now, I'm going to go and have a look around. Come stay with us at Q Roadhouse Motel and don't forget to book online. And in 1892, um, Michael Fitzgerald put the, pulled the first bit of gold out of Q. Um, they believe it was right near where the fire station is now. And him and his two Aboriginal friends pulled about over seven kilos of gold out of there within the first week. And they told their friend Tom Q about it. Tom came down, he picked his own area. He found heaps of nuggets within days. He went up straight away. He went up to Nanai and about 400 kilometers away and registered his claim. Within days of, reg of him registering, there was 400 people flocked down here. Now, Day Dawn was the sister town to Q. It's only a few kilometers in between them. And there's nothing left of Day Dawn now, but I just brought you out here to show you. Within the 1900s, the gold had run out and both the towns sort of died away. But gold's, the price of gold at the moment is so good that all these old claims are being opened up again. So this is a big company mine here now, the Day Dawn. And this old ruin, guys. This is the old hospital. The original hospital in 1892 was just an old tin humpy up north of town but they built this stone building 1895 and this little ruins of all that's left of it we're going to see a lot of things like this over the next few weeks so the canning stock routes i've told you about stock routes where the pastoralists and farmers used to move their their stock for it to market um, the Canning Stock Route's a really famous one, really popular with four-wheel drivers and off-road motorcyclists. And it's, uh, it goes from Waluna to Halls Creek, which is up through some of the most harshest country in the world. But in 1906, Alfred Canning was um, contracted by the government to open up that area, to, to find a way through to Halls Creek. And it started here south of Kew, the expedition, and this installation is commemorating that great feat and now we're at the lookout it's easy to find to see these big water tanks at the top of the hill look at this country guys it's as far as you can see incredible oh, there's even a barbecue up here guys you can have a few beers, bit of a sausage sizzle, 
look out at the countryside just incredible look out just up out in the hill there below it this is the pioneer cemetery um, doesn't have the information that they had at Lennonville about who's buried here but they it has been a lot well better kept up they've even put crosses here for the people whose headstones haven't lasted now we're out at um Millie's Soak. Now this was a popular, really popular picnic spot and most of the water from the original, when the town first, queue first started, came from here and was carted into town. We're about maybe 20 kilometres by road but it's about 15 kilometres across country and people used to come out here, you could imagine all the, the ladies in their best dresses riding out here on a push bike for a day out at the Soak. Um, sorry about the flies guys, you've probably noticed the last couple of days there's been a lot of flies but this one's even worse. Now when the typhoid epidemic happened in the 1890s this is where they made the tent hospital so it wasn't kept it out of queue not risking everyone else's lives but there's a graveyard just up here we'll go and have a look at that. guys. I do my little pitch about subscribing at the end of the video. I don't usually beg, but I am going to beg today. I really want this to become my job and it's up to you guys to make that happen. So just down there below the video is the red subscribe button and the bell icon. Click them both for me. Watch the occasional video. I, I love doing this guys and I want to be able to do it for the rest of my life. I'm just following these arrows on the ground, guessing they're going to take me to the graves. Well guys, but he flies. This memorial, I'm guessing his ashes are buried here, not his body, but that's 2002. This one's 1997. I thought this was the graves from the, from the typhoid epidemic, but I'm guessing that might be what these are. And guys, here they've got these arrows everywhere but it's incredibly easy to get lost in this country so as you're walking away from your car wherever you are pick a landmark or something so you've got an idea how to get back to your car because if you look here say I was to take this track by I missed this arrow here and I was to take this track and I just walk 20 meters up there and I start to panic and believe me, it's very easy to panic out here, even on. One of the big rules anywhere in the country is if you open a gate, shut it. And don't think, oh, I'll be back out here in half an hour, I'll shut it on the way out, shut, go through it. Shut it where you go through. Open it again and shut it on the way out. But if the gate's open, don't shut it. That's the rule as well. And guys, these are working sheep stations and as we get further north they're working cattle stations and the leaseholders don't have to let you on to see these tourist places but if they're good enough to let you on their property guys have the respect for them as well please now guys we're at Wolga Rock this is the second largest monolith in Australia I believe after Ayers Rock um, about 1.7 kilometers long about 5 k's around you can walk up to the top, it takes about 10 minutes I'm told, it's an easy walk. But what I'm here for is there's around 980 ancient cave paintings in here. And um, I'm assured that it's okay to film here. I'm excited guys, I really am. This is, um, I want to thank the local Wajari people for sharing this with us because you the, the, legally they can lock us all out of here thank you very much guys I'm excited wow this is just all carvings ancient rock art all along here just unbelievable guys if I was to do nothing else this whole trip that was worth all the miles driven all the time it's taken, the flies, the heat. Oh, bloody fly on the lens as we're speaking. Look at this guys, just... Again, I want to thank the Wadjuri people. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I can't say I'm so honoured to 
to be able to share in this and look how it's just growing and growing behind me guys unbelievable so in 1935 sorry guys it's been a hot long day in 1935 the premier mining company leased this area this is the big big bell mine site you can see the slag dumps waste dumps over there 1936 they built a town there was 850 people built here this was the old pub and this whole area around here is all the old town. Um, the pub's the main building that's left, but there's a lot of remnants all around. You could spend a day in here exploring. And if we look here, this is the pub here. This kind of shows how big the area was. Just having a bit of lunch here out of uh, queue. And, um... This is what I do, I look for drilling targets. I've been doing it for 40 years. Um, I advise you to come out in the winter. It's quite pleasant, beautiful in the winter. This time of year, summer. She's a bit brutal, but uh, you can lose a few kilos out here, that's for sure, you know. Lunch is salad, dinner's a couple of beers, that's it. So uh, yeah, 40 years and still going, cheers. Sorry guys, I can't find any info on this. I don't know if it's new or old. It looks very, very old. A luxury mansion made of corrugated iron. Only in the gold fields. And this is the War Memorial Park, actually called the Arthur Stanley Gurnley Park because he was a Victoria Cross winner. I've explained to you before what the Victoria Cross is, the highest award available for the British Armed Forces. This is the Shire office guys, inside they've got an amazing photo gallery but it's all private photos so I don't want to put it on film but you can come and have a look look at this old building, just this whole town there's the visitor centre across there again look at this, just amazing and another little story about the Shire office J. Edgar Hoover, the old president of the United States he was a geologist around here before he was president, that was well known but this is where he used to stay and they used to call it the gentleman's club but the gentleman's club's really just a nice name for a brothel so yeah J Edgar Hoover was a bit of a player by the sounds of things not much else to do out here drink and gamble and go to gentlemen's clubs it's the old West Australian bank over there you can imagine the gold and money that went through that place in the high times of this town. And this bandstand just outside the bank, they tell me it's rare because it's hexagonal instead of being round. But they would have had the bra you could imagine the brass bands playing here and the guys coming up here in their horses or just on foot, coming to the bank selling their little bit of gold. Just amazing guys. And look at this, another corrugated iron pub. Just amazing, it really is guys. Well guys, I'm surprised. I really didn't know there was so much to do in Kew, so much to see. I had planned on doing Kew and Mika Thara in one video, but no, Kew's gonna get a video all of its own. Um, just amazing guys. Um, I'm really tired, I'm really hot, but it was worth it. That rock arc out at Walga Rock, just incredible it really got me here guys now if you haven't subscribed yet hit that mad dog icon up there or the subscribe button down below you may as well hit the bell icon while you're down there i always try and respond to your comments so leave a comment give me a big thumbs up share this video everywhere you can and we'll see you in the next one